Tom Belt is a fluent Cherokee speaker and a keeper of cultural knowledge who works to connect today's Cherokees with lifeways from our past. Tom is currently working with archaeologists and anthropologists to uncover important new ideas connected to four foundational Cherokee towns. This is what, in, in archaeological and anthropological terms, has been named a nutting stone. And it's a feature whereby uh, they would uh, prepare and, and actually uh, break open hickory nuts and walnuts. This is where food was made. Generation after generation, for a thousand years. My name is Thomas Belt. I come from the uh, Rocky Ford community in Oklahoma, north of Tahlequah. I've been here for 30 years, and I have been a teacher of uh, Cherokee language. We are sitting here today, and this mound behind me is the remnants of the great city of Cowie, located on the banks of the Little Tennessee River in what is now called Macon County, North Carolina. In Cherokee, we would say Anikawiji, which would mean the Deer Clan town or the Deer Clan place. Noted in history and documented as being one of the great towns of the Cherokee people. One of the first towns that was visited and used as a diplomacy center even by the British colonialists. This town was a uh, permanent town. Watauga was a permanent town, and Nikwasi was a permanent town, and they're in real close proximity to each other. Nikwasi, as it's called now in the anglicized form, in Franklin, in downtown Franklin, comes from the Cherokee word Nokwisi. Nokwisi is our word for star. Watauga comes from our word for the goldfinch bird, and it is Wadiga. Wadiga becomes Watauga. So it's Goldfinch Place, Star Town. They are about three miles apart, almost virtually in a straight line. And so the reason why we come to these places is to reconnect, not just with the place itself, but with ourselves, because we come from these places. This is where our ancestors lived. They made these places. They fixed these places for there to be habitation, and we lived here according to the rules set down by our society to live in an environmental and biological cooperative state, a sustainable state with everything around us. So we not only lived with science, we lived in science, and we lived it. Corridor to Nequansi, it's mm -hmm. just right there. It's Dr. Riggs and Dr. Eastman are archeologists the idea of archaeologists and Native peoples, Native communities working together is a fairly new kind of a thing. It hasn't been that long ago when archaeologists weren't considered as someone we would even talk to. In recent times, people like Dr. Riggs and Dr. Eastman and others in their fields have begun to realize in the words of Vine Deloria that they need to come down out of their ivory towers and stop participating in a discipline of studying death. These folks are actively engaged in bringing those things back to life, not just finding them and putting them on display and documenting them, but trying to figure out how those things worked, what they meant, and how important they were to the people that lived then, thereby is understanding that if it was important to our ancestors, to our grandmothers and grandfathers, then it's very likely it's very important to us too. And that needs to be kept. So they're helping us to revive that. Archaeology is a tool that can be used to do all kinds of things. It can be used to illuminate the past, to give people access to their own past, 
in ways that they don't have otherwise. So what we've done most recently in, in our work at the town of Watauga is we very much focused on, on non-invasive technologies to try to understand the structure of this place, which before we started, we knew very little about. One of the, the things that we have come to understand is that the public building built on top of the northern mound there at Watauga was very precisely aligned with the winter solstice sunrise, summer solstice sunset. And I mean, by precision, I mean that if you get on the axis of that building, it is perfectly aligned with the last moment that the sun shines on the longest day of the summer. So we, we cast around in some, some astronomical programs and found that in mid-February, there's a big vertical cluster of stars that rises above the horizon right on that bearing. In a vertical. In a vertical line. It would look like a column of stars, plus the very beginnings of the Milky Way, when it's reappearing after its winter, shows up. From Watauga, it would be right over Nkwasi. I think just on the face of it, what it tells us is that astronomy was extremely important to these communities. I mean, we've known in the past about Mesoamerican civilizations. You know, the Maya were, were just consummate astronomers. A lot of things are centered around that astronomy. We just didn't have the evidence for it in the Cherokee case. And now we're starting to see the evidence of extremely complex astronomies. They deduced and were able to adjudicate cycles of time in the universe, in the cosmos from those towns. All of these places had a purpose and we connect with these. And that tells us that when we do that, then that connects us with these places and makes it a part of what we are. And it completes us as human beings. These folks had a scientific system that governed everything. And sort of thinking about place and where you are, it's not just where you are on this surface, it's where you are within everything going on around you within, with the cosmos and those cycles. And, and you know where you are in such a rich way that I don't even think most of us can even appreciate what that would feel like to know truly where you are in time and space. It's pretty cool. Time and space. Mm -hmm. We know what to plant. We know what to harvest. We know when things are growing, when things aren't growing. We know when to when to promulgate food and medicine sources for our livelihood and, and, and how to do it in a sustainable manner with all the things that lives around us, every plant, every animal, every bird, so that that kind of sustainability, that kind of cycles will continue in an apex fashion. That seems to me to be the purpose for knowing about these things, not to manipulate them, not to change them, not to use them for our advantage, but to be able to live in a healthy manner with those cycles so that life itself can promulgate and can go on. The meaning of life was to understand these things, not control them. That's our purpose here is to be helpers, not takers, but helpers. <laughs>